This video ends when I pull off the perfect season. 20 and 0. And the team I'm selecting for this rebuild is the Carolina Panthers. I think the Chiefs or the Cowboys would have been a little too overpowered, but I wasn't prepared for Cardinals level difficulty. Let's take a look at the team that will one day be undefeated. The cornerstone of this team is rookie Bryce Young. Bryce Young is awesome because he starts out as a superstar, so he's going to progress really, really fast. Not to mention, he has 87 speed and 89 acceleration. You can't teach quarterbacks how to be fast. He's pretty much going to have those stats forever. That's awesome. Those stats really aren't even that bad. A guy that I'm instantly thinking about trading, though, is Adam Thielen. Our goal is to go 20-0. and 0. It's not going to happen in the first or second or probably third year. So a 33-year-old wide receiver is just... It's just not the guy. Not to mention, if Bryce Young is going to develop as well as we want him to, we're going to need to get him a legitimate wide receiver one. We do have Jonathan Mingo. Low-key, he's kind of mid. 90 speed, 92 excel. Yeah, he's star dev. Yeah, he's 6'2", but kind of want to get him somebody better. Taylor Moulton is older, but a very solid right tackle. I'm going to hang on to him. He's got the captain patch, man. Not trading a captain. I said that out loud. Adam Thielen is also a captain. I lied. I will be, tra I will be trading a captain. The brightest spot of this O-line, though, is Ikea Kwanu. Superstar left tackle. He's already 79 overall. I imagine he'll be a 90 plus when we go 20 and 0. Defense has some really nice pieces too. Brian Burns is historically a franchise god. He's 25. He's superstar. He's very fast. I imagine he'll hit superstar X Factor. I know he's going to have some awesome seasons. We also have Derek Brown, also 25 years old, 84 overall, going to progress very well. Got Dante Jackson at corner. He's 27, so he's not getting much better, but super fast. 95 speed, 94 excel. Jeremy Chin, one of my all-time favorites. He's listed as a safety in Madden 23, but he was moved to cornerback in 24. Big corner. 6'3", 220 pound corner. Von Bell is a stud. Not sure how I feel about that beard right there, but um, it's a little slow, a little old. We'll see if he makes it to the undefeated squad. And at free safety, we have Xavier Woods. Defense feels more stacked than offense, no doubt but it's still not that good the very first thing i'm doing is finding a wide receiver one who bryce young can develop with and my target right now is brandon Ayuk. 49ers have so many weapons i'm hoping they'll part ways with him brandon Ayuk is also a monster in franchise on paper he doesn't seem like he would develop that well but i have played so many franchises where brandon Ayuk becomes a 99 overall superstar x factor and i want a juicy slice of that cake God, that sounded so sus. Let's see if we could trade Adam Thielen and a 2026 round four for IU. This is an egregious low ball, but you guys taught me well. And honestly, we're way closer than I feel like we should be. So I like offering my 2026 picks. I imagine we'll be pretty solid by 2026. So here's a round four and a round three and Adam Thielen. Very close. I'll hand off a 2025 round six as well. So close. I think this is the moneymaker here. An absolute haul of picks in the 2026 NFL draft. Around four in 2025. Oh my God, are you kidding? And we finally got her to go through Adam Thielen and my 2026 second and third round pick for Brandon Ayuk. So when 2026 rolls around, we won't have the capital that we want, but I have to imagine it's not going to matter too much to this squad. Brandon Ayuk moves to wide receiver one in the depth chart. Jonathan Mingo is wide receiver two, and LaVisca Chenault is wide receiver three. And I got to remember to put Brandon Ayuk as my slot wide receiver. Super important for simulated stats and franchise. Thank you guys for all the help on these rebuilds. For anyone new to franchise, your simulated stats are heavily correlated to your offensive and defensive playbooks. Personally, I think this is very silly, but Dallas and Kansas City are very good for your quarterback. This is why Dak Prescott and Patrick Mahomes always win MVP on top of obviously being good. But we're going to give Bryce Young Dallas offensive playbook. And defensive, I'm going to stick with Carolina. I've never tried it, and I want to try it now. Listen, we made the only important move I wanted to make, and that was getting Bryce Young a stud-wide receiver. He's got Brandon Ayuk. Hopefully, season one is solid, but not too solid. I'd like to tank a little bit for a good draft pick. Let's get after it, boys. After two weeks of NFL football, we're 0-2. It's actually pretty cool. I would like to tank for a nice draft pick right now, but I don't want my players to play so poorly that they're frustrated. I will be using auto-generated rookies, and I've edited the draft class strength to be strong, 
for every single position. Now, this does mean that my opponents around the league will also be drafting better players. I think the auto-generated rookies are kind of mid on average, so this should be fun. Now, it's time to take a look at the draft class and see what we're going to want. I imagine we'll be drafting in the top 10. There's a few quarterbacks and offensive linemen, but I would definitely like to pick up something defensive. There's a few stud linebackers up here, Clyde Allen and Greg Bigsby. We got Taj Thorpe, a left end, Sergio Hicks, a corner. Now, my thought process is Bryce Young and Ayuk are going to develop very well no matter what I do. And free agency tends to have really good offensive line options. So I don't feel like burning a first-round pick on, you know, Gregory Turner or Taj Nash, who conveniently are the same guy. Dude, Madden needs some new face scans. Can we please, please get some new face scans? I'm setting my focus scouting for Iris Foster to outside linebackers. Would love to have good info on the outside linebackers. And after that, I want info on the corners. Andy Rooker, our three-star scout, has a 25% efficiency boost on corners. Uh, and in week eight, we get to choose that focus scouting, and I'm going to make it corners. So hopefully we have a good idea on what the corners and the linebackers look like in this draft. You might be asking why I'm choosing linebackers. I truly believe it's important to double down on your strengths rather than trying to build an overall average team. For example, you look at this D-line. It's pretty mid. I mean, Derek Brown's nice. So yeah, I could go D-tackler left end, but I think I'm just going to get an average guy in free agency. But as far as trying to draft a monster, I would love to pair Brian Burns with a freak show linebacker. And then as far as corners go, I just think it's really important to draft a good corner. I just think it's important to draft a good corner. You can find monster corners in the draft. And I feel like I don't see amazing corners in free agency very often. The other thing too is I can move Jeremy Chin back to safety. I can move Jeremy Chin to free safety and try and pick up a good corner. That's the strategy, boys. We're simming to midseason. If the Panthers want to be 0-7 at midseason, I, I don't even mind, man. The Panthers are usually a decent sim team, though. I don't imagine we're actually gonna be winless at the halfway mark we are three and three we are at the we are at the front of the nfc south that is disgusting if i make the playoffs if i make the playoffs the nfc south is straight up poverty that is a joke my national focus scouting will be on corners i would do linebackers but my three-star scout does not have linebackers in his expertise we're headed all the way up to the playoffs baby let's get it i'm excited to see how bryce young brandon Ayuk, hayden hurst lavisca chanel jonathan mingo did bills are the one seed in the afc and cowboys are the one seed in the nfc the bears are the four seed how did that happen here's a quick evaluation of the movement and a quick overview of the movement on the draft boards gerald mcknight out of north carolina has shot up the boards a scrambler quarterback left outside linebacker clyde allen that's a guy that i've been looking at grabbing myself the only problem is i'm seven and ten i'm not gonna have this high of a pick i could trade up if he looks that generational but here's the thing clyde allen has good looking stats you know some a's and b's in there his physicals are not great solid good on everything actually then decent side he doesn't have a single great physical and physicals are super important i'm 95 percent on this dude sergio hicks this dude looks like a monster but once again i don't know if he's gonna be there for me great to elite excel i think what's most impressive is his skills this guy is a 75 overall or better there's no question a tackle a zone a press a awareness b block shed b catching as a corner most likely the best corner in the draft my favorite linebacker is this dude cameron harrison so he's got a minus two rank change he's in the ballpark of where my draft pick's gonna be but i most like his physicals great to elite speed good to great strength solid to good acceleration it's better than that top five pick linebacker that's for sure and then his skills aren't bad too a to c block shedding a to c awareness b finesse moves a to c power moves also his archetype is exactly what i'm looking for he is a power rusher outside linebacker brian burns is a speed rusher so the idea is yeah brian burns come off one edge and you got cam harrison coming off the other and you've got a very very scary duo Plus Derek Brown down there. Greg Bigsby is the linebacker above him. I mean, this dude doesn't have a single physical that's in elite range. I don't like that. Also, his skills are worse than Cameron. Also, his skills are all like on average significantly worse. He has one A in here and that's pursuit maybe. I don't know. He's just not the guy. I think Sergio Hicks and Cameron Harrison are my two favorites right now. Take a look at this monster in the second round though. Also a corner. This is Marcel Sutton, a zone corner out of Tennessee. Skills are all average average a lot of b's in here there's an a in zone coverage which is really nice for corners but look at this dude's physicals great to elite speed 
great to elite strength good great acceleration his jumping is not great his agility is not great but i don't know i like this dude i like this dude in the second round and his rank has gone up seven since week one so i'm gonna put him as a favorite as well see if he's available when i'm drafting in the second round oh my god dude dallas cowboys playbook op Bryce Young finishes seventh in MVP voting as a rookie. That is so massive for him. That is so massive. That's huge. Brandon Ayuk gets sixth in offensive player of the year voting. So I'm certain now that Brandon Ayuk had a very good year. Bryce Young does not get offensive rookie of the year, though. He got outdone by Bijan Robinson. That's a bummer. Bryce Young passed for 4,400 passing yards, fifth in the NFL, 31 touchdowns. It's, he's insanely good. That's an insanely good first year. Miles Sanders eclipsed 1,000 yards on the ground with five touchdowns. Chubba Hubbard also got four. Nice. Bryce Young had two. Brandon Ayuk. Oh, my God. Whoa. LaVisca Chenault, too? Jesus. Brandon Ayuk had 1,300 yards and 11 touchdowns. Chenault... 1,207. Jonathan Mingo, I expected him to have a little more than this, but that's okay. He's had a really good season. Uh, it doesn't look like we use our tight end too much in this playbook. I was kind of thinking about picking up a really good tight end, but when I see these stats, I think I'm just going to stick to the strategy I'm doing right now. And defensively, Shaq Thompson had one and a half sacks, 127 tackles. Derek Brown had seven and a half. Luvu had four and a half. Ryan Birds had six and a half. Now, Frankie Louvu is actually the guy I'd replace if I do draft one of these outside linebackers. And that's honestly really good news because Louvu is getting 12 TFLs and four and a half sacks and Frankie Louvu is not good. He's normal dev, no abilities, average stats. So we get in a monster in there and I think you double those stats. Very exciting year one, honestly. Bryce Young, fifth in the league in passing yards. There is no way. Oh my God. Dude, he didn't even win unless somehow he won Offensive Rookie of the Year. Whoa, 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 whoa. Bryce Young is a superstar <laughs> X-Factor in year one. Wait a minute. I need to see the league history. Did he actually win Offensive Rookie of the Year? Somehow he outvoted? Oh, my God. Okay, so big shocker. What did I tell you guys? Chiefs and Cowboys, right? Chiefs and Cowboys, Super Bowl. Chiefs win. Mahomes wins MVP. Rishi Rice wins Offensive Rookie of the Year. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Drew Sanders. I have never seen that combo before in a sim. And Bryce Young went from superstar to superstar X-Factor based solely off of his incredible season. Damn. I mean, he did have 4,500 passing yards and a 31 to 12 ratio, but that's I, this is way more than I expected. We're into free agency right now, and my targets are guards. My guards are pitiful on this team. Why is Austin Corbett so deep in the depth chart? What? Okay, my guards are nowhere near as pitiful as I thought. I have no idea why he was that deep. So in free agency, we do need to pick up a right guard. LaVisca Chenault did not want to re-sign with the Panthers as well. So Mingo is now wide receiver two. And Terrace Marshall is wide receiver three. I'm honestly cool with that. Bryce Young is a fucking X-Factor. Oh my God, what a monster, dude. Not to mention Ayuk. Now, the, the least surprising thing to me is Ayuk. I know Ayuk is a franchise god. It's already a 90 overall slot receiver. He's got abilities himself he went up to a superstar from star damn that's amazing did i get the same luck on defense no changes in dev traits on defense that's okay uh left end so we either draft a left end or we pick one up in free agency right now obviously we need another d tackle as well as those guys have vacated gosh we really have a lot of good corners though here i honestly think what i do is i need to move jeremy chin to free safety I don't like that the Panthers moved him to a cornerback. He's a safety to me. I think we move Jeremy Chin back to free safety, and then we draft a corner. Mike Williams is available in free agency, but there's just no reason. We also don't have that much cap room. 15 mil in cap room. We can basically make one big signing, and that's it. At right guard, I'm going to pick up Graham Glasgow. Absolutely nothing impressive at all, but... um. He's a 73 overall right guard. Our team needs somebody. Give him a pretty solid deal here. Left end Bryce Huff is available. Pretty expensive. I barely have the cap space for this. So we'll see if he takes this offer, but I'm gonna give him a player friendly, low risk, three year deal. He's only 26. This is a nice free agent option. So Graham Glasgow does sign with the Panthers, but Bryce Huff did not take our deal. So right now we still have a serious deficit at defensive line. I'll probably end up using a third or fourth round pick on some D linemen then. I'll end up using a third, fourth, or fifth pick on a D lineman, but I just don't have those positions scouted. My target place to draft is anywhere between 10 and 14. Now, unfortunately, the Carolina Panthers do not have their own first round pick. So if I want to secure one of my guys, I need a round one pick. Texans have round one pick five, and they're actually pretty interested in Dante Jackson. I'm cool giving up Dante Jackson because I plan on drafting a really good corner here. 
And I have two good options. I also have round four, pick 110, and round five, pick 152. Let's start by lowballing. Dante Jackson in round four, pick 110. They are not interested. I'll give up my 2025 third rounder. Would they do it for this? We're getting there. I am so close. With Dante Jackson, Frankie Louvu, and my third round pick in 2025, I'm dangerously close give him one of my fifth rounders in 24 we're right there this is this is diabolical levels of trading dante jackson frankie louvu a fifth a third a fourth and a fifth scattered across the next three years for the fifth overall pick Ooh! now one thing to note is sergio hicks the corner that we were looking at has already gone now we have to remember, we did just trade away Frankie Luvu and Dante Jackson. I want to replace both of them with younger, better players who will develop even more than they could have. So that is a lot of pressure on Cameron Harrison. But Cameron Harrison is still my favorite linebacker. Elite speed, great strength, good excel, solid agility. His skills, I see a good amount of A's in the skills. He appears to be the best linebacker available. Clyde Allen is technically higher on the board, a top five projection, but those are just, like his physicals are dog shit. I just can't justify it. Honestly, his skills aren't that good either. Maybe Clyde Allen's like a superstar X Factor or something. That's the only way I could really justify that. I think Cameron Harrison is a safer selection. My pick is Cameron Harrison. Hit him, Deb. 88 speed. Oh, this guy's a monster. Yo. Cameron Harrison is a short power rusher, six foot two, but he's 268 pounds. He's 21. A lefty out of LSU. With 88 speed, 87 excel. Damn, this dude's a beast. So he's guaranteed to be star dev too. We'll have to see on his overall, but Cameron Harrison, that's our pick. I love it. My next pick is round two, pick 14, which honestly scares me because the guy that I want the most is Marcel Sutton. And he's like, he 100% could get picked off before I have an opportunity to get him. Round two, pick 14. I really don't think Marcel Sutton's going to be available. I could have traded up for him, but I feel like we've made so many trades already. I just got to kind of take the L here. I don't think Marcel Sutton's available. He's not. That's sad, man. I really wanted him. We'll see how good he was. Trayvon Whitaker is available with great speed, solid acceleration, elite agility. I don't hate Trayvon Whitaker, the 6'3 zone corner out of UCF. Look at this dude, Alan Burst, though. Jesus, look at this dude. He's got A's in everything. He's a right tackle. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. Taylor Moten is eating up so much cap space on this team. I could free up a lot of cap if I picked up this dude and offloaded Taylor Moten. Dude, Taylor Moten's cost me like 30 mil. And we're negative cap right now. I'm actually gonna take Alan Burst. I'm just scared he's normal dev. Alan Burst! Shit. He is. He is normal dev. That's okay. I imagine he's a high overall right tackle. Take our whiff there. Darn it. That would have been nice if he was hidden dev. Alan Dorsey has good speed, elite jumping, elite acceleration. <laughs> He has D to F awareness and F zone coverage and F tackle. But he has A catching. <laughs> this is a weird corner. What is going on with this dude, Alan Dorsey? I'm going to take a risk on this goofball here. We did trade away Dante Jackson. Damn. Honestly, he has very good stats, but also normal dev. 91 speed, 94 excel, 87 agility. Two normal deaths. Not my best draft. My fourth round pick will be a left end. I'm going to take Kyle Machetti. Machetti? Machetti? He's 6'3", 319. Holy shit. You're a big boy. No way. Doug, I finally get a hidden dev. He's in the fourth round. But we desperately needed a left end. This dude is slow, slow. Like crazy slow. But whatever, man. At least he's hidden dev, right? And I'm going to let my computer make the rest of these picks. Overall, I'm going to rate this draft probably a four out of 10. Still got to see the draft recap. But um, was hoping to get Marcel Sutton. I would have had to have taken him with that round one pick instead of Cameron. And I think I had to take Cameron there. Let's take a look at the draft recap. This is, ooh, this is a big part. This is a big part. Okay. Cameron Harrison, 74 overall is not as high as I would have hoped, but at the linebacker position, it makes sense. Alan Burst was a bad pick. I got so excited seeing that good looking of a right tackle that I got a little blinded. That was probably not the right call, but Cameron Harrison, 88 speed, 87 excel. This dude will definitely be a monster. Now, I don't know what your guys' opinion is on this, but I actually am going to look at the dev trait. Because sometimes when I sim, I don't know if they were actually the dev trait that unlocked or if they earned it. I don't really understand how that works. So we were praying that Cameron Harrison is a superstar. That would actually kind of save this draft. Come on, boys. Yes! Yes! Oh, that saved us. Oh, 
let's go. Let's go. All right, Cameron Harrison is a superstar. Oh, that's huge. Because Alan Burst and Alan Dorsey were just trash. Oh, man, horrible picks. Alan Dorsey's a 68 overall. This is a horrible pick. Kyle Mahetti? Kyle Majetti? The hidden dev left end. 65. Uh, I assume he's star. I'm going to check because I checked the last guy. I got to check him too. He is star. So he's star dev. And then the computer picked me up. Um, computer picked me up a free safety normal dev out of Kansas State. As well as a D tackle 63 overall normal dev out of South Carolina. Let's see the entire draft class. The very first pick right tackle was a 79 overall. I... Sergio Hicks got taken third. I would have had to have traded up to round one pick three, and he's an 81 over. He's probably the best player in the draft. Oh, I knew he was a monster. 94 speed, 95 excel. I think the next most depressing thing I'm going to see is when I see Marcel Sutton. When I see Marcel Sutton. So here's where we took Cameron Harrison. The other linebackers taken under us were worse. Significantly worse. Clyde Allen and Kevin Best were no better. Cameron Harrison is definitely the best linebacker in the draft, so I'm happy with that. Well, maybe not. Max... Blakely looks solid. A lot of 74s and 73s now, so the rest of this is not impressing me. I don't have FOMO about any of these. Where did Marcel Sutton get taken? That's what's going to bother me. He's a 77 overall with 96 speed. Oh my god, I never... I did all the scouting properly, but I didn't have the picks to make it happen. That was such an oversight by me. That's stupid. I'm stupid. 5'11", 23 years old. Hidden Dev, 96 speed, 93 acceleration. God, he's a monster. It's all right, boys. Hey, the goal is to go 20 and 0. We're not going to have a perfect draft every time. We just got to make do with the roster that we have. And uh, let's keep building, boys. We do have a superstar X Factor 22 year old, and that's Bryce Young. So I'm still all right. Start of season two, we've got our auto generated prospects here. Hoping that I can have a better draft in 2025. Certainly hoping to have a better draft this time around. Looks like this class is pretty rounded on all positions, as it's supposed to be. I have strong on every position. For scouts, I'm hiring Rondé Barber. I whiffed on corners, but I want to try again in this draft class. So we're going to hire him. And for my two star scout, I'm going to work on my offensive line. We'll grab Sheila Thornton. Here's how the roster looks right now. The rookie Cameron Harrison, pretty much the only good part of our draft. Really struggled in that draft, unfortunately, but there's nothing we can do but look forward and have a good year this year. We're actually off to a super hot start. We're five and two and the Saints are 0-7. Uh, we're both 83 overall, though. So I like being 5-2, but I'm such a tank advocate. I want to tank every single season to get the best draft picks. Just to whiff on them and get all normal devs. Sick. Dude, what? We played absurdly well. I mean, I do, I do like my roster, but I don't like my roster 12-5. It just doesn't seem like a 12 and 5 roster to me. I'm almost mad. This is the opposite of tanking. Uh, let's see how everybody progressed. Bryce Young's a god. Bryce Young is a 90 overall already. I think I made the right call at the Panthers. So Panthers progress really well in franchise. He's 23 superstar X Factor, 90 overall. His like he's already at 99 short, 98 medium. Dude's got five abilities. Good God, Bryce Young. Ayuk's up to a 93. Miles Sanders has been playing great. Offensive line looks the same. Hayden Hurst don't care. Uh, he can walk in free agency for all I care. He's eating up 10 mil. Cameron Harrison, baby. How has Cameron Harrison done this year? He's up to a 79 overall. I will say though, so he's plus five overall up, but he has no morale right now. So that's a that's a little bit concerning. Kind of hoping he's going to get defensive rookie of the year, but based on no morale boost, kind of makes me think he doesn't get it. Corners are playing great. Looking good there. Bryce Young, fourth in the league in passing yards this year. We fell in the MVP voting though. He was like sixth last year. He's ninth this year. I suppose we're winning more games, so he's passing less. It's my theory. Miles Sanders gets fourth in Offensive Player of the Year voting. Shaq Thompson gets third in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Dexter Newbery for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Defensive Rookie of the Year? Dude, my bum corner, Alan Dorsey, got third. Cameron Harrison got 10th. I, I must not be utilizing Cameron Harrison properly. Oh, I'm such a casual. I know why Cameron Harrison isn't being used properly. Guys, you know why Brian Burns gets great stats? I need to talk about this. Brian Burns gets great stats because Brian Burns is my rush left end. My rush right end right now is D. Dot Johnson. I forgot to move Cameron Harrison up in the depth chart. Oh, dude, I botched it for him. Wow, I am struggling on this rebuild. It's I, dude, like we're, we're 12 and five. I don't really care. But now that Cameron Harrison has moved in the depth chart, he's gonna have a much better sophomore year. It's all right, boys. Hey, you live and you learn, gentlemen. You're not always gonna rebuild perfect every time. Despite what the YouTube comments think, I will not rebuild perfect every time. Miles Sanders with an elusive back upgrade. Miles Sanders is getting 
real good. Awareness, break, tackle, juke, and spin. Derek Brown also becoming an absolute threat. He's my rush deep tackle. So technically, he's right end. But in most sets, he's rushing from D-tackle when Brian Burns is coming on the edge. I'm going to sim to the Super Bowl. I just feel like there's no way I actually make it to the Super Bowl, right? The Super Bowl 59 is Jets versus Falcons. <laughs> oh, my God. So Bryce Young, another amazing year. A better touchdown interception ratio. Miles Sanders, 1,300 yards and fucking 24 touchdowns. Fantasy monster. Fantasy football monster, not to mention... He's 25 receptions and a touchdown on the ground. So if you're playing PPR. Brandon Ayuk, another 1,200-yard season, 10 touchdowns. Terrace Marshall, 1,000-yard season. Mingo, another 905 uh, touchdown season. So I'm noticing in this offense, the wide receiver three is actually outperforming the wide receiver two. Terrace Marshall is my wide receiver three. Mingo is my wide receiver two. Jets win the Super Bowl. Sauce Gardner is Super Bowl MVP. Going into free agency, we have 70 million in cap space. So we finally have solved that issue. This is for a few reasons, but most importantly, dude, we've made some mistakes in this rebuild, but one mistake we did not make was trading for Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk is already a superstar X Factor. We now have a crazy duo of a superstar X Factor quarterback with our superstar X-Factor wide receiver one. Terrace Marshall walks in free agency. Hayden Hurst is gone. That's amazing. We were overpaying like crazy on him. JC Horn is upgraded to a superstar. That's crazy. So JC Horn is developing really, really well too. But sad news, Shaq Thompson is gone too. We still technically can re-sign him in free agency here. But let's see what kind of moves we can make in free agency. Let's see who's available. Amari Cooper is a superstar expert. He's available. I just don't need him. To replace Shaq Thompson, I'm going to grab Jerome Baker. Jerome Baker wants to be a Carolina Panther, 28 years old. So he's got a good, you know, three or four years left in him. He already wants to play for us, but I don't like risking it. You, know, you guys tell me to offer those neutral deals. I don't know. That shit scares me, man. I'm going to take Jerome Baker on a hefty deal here. Hopefully we can lock up middle linebacker. I do need a safety since we don't have Xavier Woods. And Julian Love is normal dev, but he's really not looking for too much money. And he's already pretty interested in being a Panther. I'll soften his deal a little bit, give him a four-year offer, and we'll see if he signs. Harrison Butker, dude, he's actually a dog. I would love to pick up Harrison Butker. I want him for two years. Stay with us for two years, Harrison. Dude, Fletcher Cox. Fletcher Cox, his overall has gone down significantly, but he's still superstar. Dude, do you think he'd stay for two years? Not this year, but the next year, I could see us potentially actually being ready to win 20-0. And holy shit, if we had a superstar... D-tackle, even if he's old. I'm just scared he might retire, but I'm gonna see if we can get him. That's all I'm gonna do in free agency. I'm hanging out to this 36 million cap for next year and for obviously the rookies that we're about to get. Let's see who signed. The last thing I'd like to do is I actually wanna trade Taylor Moten. So Taylor Moten is 31, 85 overall star. I did whiff on Alan Burst a little bit, but he's still young and 74 overall. I think he's good enough to become a starter. Also, look at the cap hit on Taylor Moten. It's just insane how much we're paying this dude. I'm gonna try and get a draft pick out of him. And it looks like the New England Patriots are willing to give up their 2025 second round pick for Taylor Moten. I'm actually really excited about that. Unload some cap space, grab a second round pick, hopefully have an awesome draft this time around. It's time for the NFL draft. Our very first pick is round one, pick 24. The first guy that jumps out to me is the corner George Mullins. Last draft, we moved on a corner. George Mullins has elite speed elite jumping and elite change of direction not to mention a good amount of a's in the skills category his injury is df i turn injuries off in franchise i think injuries are stupid so this could be our guy round one pick 24 goes to george mullins the hidden deb 6 95 speed put the word out we up Put the word out. We up. Our next pick is the Patriots pick. Patriots round two pick is super high. Round two, pick three. So this is what we turned Taylor Moten into. So there's actually like, it feels like there's a lot of pressure on this pick because if I whiff on this, I'm going to feel really stupid. Now, I specifically scouted interior offensive line for this reason. The best center available is Connor Atkinson. Center is the worst part of my offensive line right now. I have a 73 overall normal dev center. Look at this monster, Connor Atkinson. So great excel, elite agility, great change of direction, great speed, elite strength. So really the most important thing there is elite strength for a center, but he's also fast. His skills are off the charts. This this is kind of like Alan Burst. Like, this dude's normal dev. That's the only thing. But I scouted him. Like, he, God, he just, he, I'm pretty sure he's that good. Taylor Moten has turned into, yes, the hidden dev, USC 
center, Connor Atkinson. 82 acceleration, really fast for a center. 93 strength is monster out the gates. I'm hoping this dude's at least a 75 overall. If he's a 74 or 75, money pick right there, Connor Atkinson. My next pick is not till round five uh, because we did trade away a lot of this draft. I'm just gonna sim to the end of this draft. We have two hidden dev players in a round one and a round two picks. We got a corner and a center. All that's left is to see how we did. Not to mention, I didn't even have Cameron Harrison at rush right end, so I goofed that last season. And we freed up a ton of cap space this year, so oh, we're ready to go 20-0. Not this year, but the year after, when I signed free agents. The big moment of truth, the draft re- <laughs> Let's go! Holy shit, we got some monsters! George Mullins is a 79, and Atkinson's a... Dude, if I whiffed last draft, I clutched the fuck up on this one. CPU took me a dog shit wide receiver, a dog shit QB, and a surprisingly high overall 7th round halfback, Derek Bryan, but I don't imagine he'll get much use. George Mullins. George Mullins is a dog, and Atkinson is a dog. 79, 78. Listen, I already kind of like broke the seal on this. You know, the flooding has began, so I'm gonna look at the dev traits on the boys. George Mullins! George fucking Mullins! Oh my god! Oh my god, I, this is the this is the second time in my life I've ever drafted a Superstar X Factor. The first time I ever did it was in my Texans rebuild, and I haven't done it since. Dude, whoa! Round two, pick three. There's no way, right? I don't even know what I would have done. Oh, dude, he's number 69. This game just knows. All right, let's see the entire draft class. There's no way I whiffed because I got two just dominant studs, but let's see the entire draft class. Highest overall player in the draft is an 83 overall left guard. Jer okay, I'm starting to think something happened here. That first draft class was so weak, and this second one is so strong, but I had the same settings for both. I'm starting to think that that first draft class, even though I adjusted the draft class strength too strong, I don't think it updated. Maybe it's because I was already in week one or something, but this looks more like what a strong draft class would look like. So my picks were good picks, but that's because this is actually a very, very strong draft class. Holy shit. All right, let's 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 sort by the pick. First pick, 82. Michael Duke out of Michigan was a bust. Uh, Larson, 77. McIntosh, an 80. Barry Staley, an 81. A lot of 73s. This was just a sore spot in the draft right here. 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 16 and 17. 18 was Sidney Williams, NDSU corner, 81 overall. Tons of good corners in this. And then there's our pick, George Mullins. Made a very good pick. Although I'm not gonna lie, the only other guy I was looking at was Russ Jeffrey, and Russ Jeffrey was an 80, but uh, 90 speed, and he's a strong safety, so I didn't really want him. We just drafted a superstar X-Factor corner. Holy shit. Trading Dante Jackson isn't such a big deal anymore. This newest draft class has two instant impact starters, Connor Atkinson and superstar X-Factor George Mullins. Free agency got us Julian Love as well as Fletcher Cox. Cameron Harrison's ready for a big year. We signed Jerome Baker to replace Shaq Thompson. And Alan Burst is our new starting right tackle. So we traded Taylor Moten and we got Connor Atkinson. That's an amazing trade because Moten's 31, Atkinson's 21. And Atkinson's since damn near his overall already. Uh, we just need Alan Burst to progress well at right tackle. That's pretty important, but it's time to play, boys. Three and four at midseason. Granted, we went 12 and five, so we have a more difficult schedule, but we don't like being three and four. Let's see how we close this year out. I'll be honest, I feel like I want to go 20 and 0 next year. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to aggressively trade every single, literally every single draft pick I have. Like I'm going to, I'm going to clean house and I'm going to get the best roster that is humanly possible. And we're just going to shit stomp the league because at this point, Bryce Young's almost going to be a 99. Brandon Ayuk's almost going to be a 99. We've developed the rookies that we can and we still have cap room because if I go too far in the future we're not going to be able to pay Bryce Young and Brandon Ayuk and Cameron and Atkinson and George Mullins and JC Horn and Brian Burns it's just not gonna be possible so I kind of have to clean fucking <laughs> I'm gonna clean house right now we just gotta let's see how we finish out this year though I'm hoping for at least a winning record. We started out weak, but we end out strong. 12 and 5. God damn. George Mullins is an 86 overall. This guy is a freak show, bro. He's a freak show. I'm giving him a slot upgrade. George Mullins was born to play football. Awareness, man, coverage, and press. With that 96 speed, 93 excel, 93 jump. Dog. Okay, let's take a look at the lineup real quick at the end of this year. Bryce Young is a 99. Brandon Ayuk is a 99. Ikki Aquanu, 89. Burst did almost exactly... What I wanted him to. He's up to a 78 with morale. Atkinson's up to an 83 with morale. Corbett's still good. Right guard sucks. So here's what I do. 
I need to trade draft picks. I need to get a right guard. I need to get a better tight end because Tommy Tremble ain't it. Uh, should probably get another really good wide receiver for Bryce Young because Ayuk's good, Mingo's good, but let's get a third guy in there. And then defensively, Mullins, dog. Fletcher Cox, actually, that was a good pick of the free agency. Probably pick up a new left end. This is a little weak here. Harrison's up to an 84. Julian Love's doing good. Burns is a 95. JC Horn's a 91. And my third string corner is amazing. So we trade for a left end. We trade for a right guard. We trade for a tight end. We trade for a wide receiver. That or we sign him in free agency. I'll probably take a look at free agency before I do anything drastic. I mean, this is amazing. Here's the thing, though. Like, I actually don't care what happens in this wild card. It literally doesn't matter to me. My goal is not to win the Super Bowl. My goal is to go undefeated. So whether we make the Super Bowl or not, I really don't care. Super Bowl 60. Oh, big shocker, everyone. It's between the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, yearly awards at Mullins win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Oh, fucking Bryce Young came second in MVP voting. Oh, that's brutal. Offensive Player of the Year, fourth is Bryce Young. Fifth is Ayuk. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Markel Hills. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Fucking Cowboys own me. Donovan, good. George Mullins gets second. Damn. I guess it doesn't really matter because if, if you like... Getting Defensive Rookie of the Year gives you a dev trade upgrade. And George Mullins is Superstar X Factor, so whatever. Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Big shocker. Everyone's so shocked. Do I need to get a tight end? Tommy Tremble went up to star dev. My backup tight end is Alan Burst. That's not right. Probably need a real backup tight end there. Von Bell is the only player to walk in free agency. But the incredible thing that I want you guys to see is my cap space. We are 100% going to be able to do this. Like, I truly believe this season we will go 20-0. 127 mil in cap space. And I'm trading away everything I got. First, though, we need to look at the best possible free agents. That's the most important thing. But Tonio's available. Derek Stingley is available. That's almost like overkill. We have such good corners. Why do we take Derek Stingley? We don't. Travis Kelsey? Holy shit. No fucking way. You're in free agency? I'm going to offer him a massive two-year deal. I don't need him for... Like, there's no point in giving him a three-year deal. At least to me. Because he's already 36. But holy shit. He's an 85 overall. He's 36. He's, I can't even believe he's still in the league. He usually retires. He already has a lot of interest in the team. Making him a massive offer. There's no way Travis Kelsey turns that down. Sorry, Tommy Tremble. Okay, great start. Probably take Grady Jarrett here and move him to left end. That's probably a good call. Two-year deal once again. Just take a pretty hefty cap hit this year. It's a pretty strong offer. I imagine he takes that. I wouldn't mind Tier Tart either. Oh, he's expensive. God damn, he's expensive. I need a safety. I need to replace Von Bell. I don't even have to replace Von Bell. I could just re-sign him. He walked, but I could just fucking walk him right back. I hear, hear you don't even want that big of a contract. Why'd you walk in the first place? I don't, I don't need to be offering this much at all, but we're going to go 20-0, and 0, and then we'll go 0-17 for the rest of human history. I don't care. Could pick up Brandon Scherf at right guard, who still has Superstar. Give him a nice one-year deal. Oh, yeah. Brandon Scherf, we want you, buddy. We want you, buddy. What's the wide receiver free agency market look like? Or, or is this going to be a trade thing? Yeah, wide receiver free agency market pitiful. Nico Collins, the best option at normal dev. Just not going to happen. Dude, look at this. There is a super star, 22-year-old, 75-year-old, and 97 speed in free agency. He doesn't even want that much money. Okay, I'm just going to pick him up for shits and gigs. I don't even imagine I'll use him. What? What are you doing in free agency? Paul McKinney. After free agency, you're looking at one of the most loaded franchises, and we haven't even traded away every single draft pick yet. Offensively, we have three superstar X factors in Bryce Young, Brandon Ayuk, and Travis Kelsey. We have three superstars in Iki Aquanu, Brandon Scherf, and the free agent Paul McKinney. What's this guy doing in free agency? You've played a year in the league. 97 speed, 98 acceleration. He's kind of disgustingly good. For what? What? I don't know. Defensively, five superstars. Fletcher Cox, Brian Burns, Cam Harrison, Von Bell, JC Horn, and one superstar X-Factor in George Mullins. Now, I do want to beef this team up, though, and I got to trade for something to beef it up. So what are we looking for? I think getting myself a monster free safety would be huge. I think we could grab an even more monstrous halfback than Miles Sanders. We could technically grab ourselves an even better right tackle, but it's it's funny. It's almost like, what do I do? What, what am I trading for right now? I wouldn't even mind like a Miles Garrett, like an insane edge rusher would be nice. Miles Garrett is old, but oh my God, man. I mean, Miles, like, how do you not? I feel like a guy like Miles Garrett is how we win the Super Bowl right now. Miles Garrett, Miles Garrett is a 98 overall, boosted to 99 with morale. He's 30 though. So I, I actually think the Browns might move him for me. 90 in, in, in absurd stats. But yeah, he's 30. Like, this is possible to me. Who's my current right end? I think it's Derek Brown, but my current left end. So I have the young Kyle Majetti. 
to get rid of because he's not getting any reps, especially when Miles Garrett comes in. Uh, what about draft picks? And my round one, pick 28. There's no way I could get Miles Garrett for this cheap, right? Even though he's 30. Okay, they're gonna need a lot more for this, but that's fine. Give him round four, pick six, pick seven. Bunch of random picks for Miles Garrett. We're close. We're actually close already. I'm gonna offer up my 2028 round two. I'm gonna give him a 2028 round three as well. Oh, we're really knocking on the door. 2027 round four. This has got to be it. This got to be it right here. Holy shit. Blockbuster trade inbound. My fourth round pick left end. A first, a second, another second, a third and a fourth for the 30-year-old Miles Garrett. This is actually like probably a good trade for the Browns. They got so many picks out of an aging player, but I'm going to get a 20-0 season. So the other thing I do got to remember to do, I got to make sure that Miles Garrett is my rush right end. Sorry, Cameron Harrison's going back to a standard linebacker role. Miles Garrett's got to be flying off the edge. This is honestly a massive signing because now we can move Grady Jarrett to D tackle one, Fletcher Cox to D tackle two. Miles Garrett is left end. Derek Brown is right end. Insane linebackers. I think my safeties still scare me, but that's it. Julian Love. I got, let's get an ability here. Let's get somebody monstrous here. Same with right tackle. I think that's just a little too weak for a 20-0 roster. We might want another wide receiver too. Keenan Allen is superstar X Factor, 86 overall. Rashawn Slater's a 93. I wonder if I can get a bundle deal off the Chargers right here. I'm going to offer up. Alan Burst, my young right tackle. I'm gonna offer I'm gonna offer up Paul McKinney. I don't know what he was doing in free agency, but now he's just trade bait. And uh a round one pick. Let's see what this does for us. Holy shit. Egregiously close already. Oh, we're getting this. Let's give him the 2026 20, round four. We're so close. Give him uh the round six, two. Now we give him the round seven and call it a day, baby. Boom! Alan Burst, Paul McKinney. A 2027 20, first round, a fourth, fifth, and a sixth for an old ass Keenan Allen. And a 93 overall, Rashawn Slater. <laughs> Holy shit. I feel like the Rams, bro. Trading all our picks. Signing everybody. We're going for the bowl. Gonna make Rashawn Slater a right tackle. I don't really know if that matters. Ayuk is wide receiver one. Allen is wide receiver two. Jonathan Mingo, wide receiver three. Keep in mind, my wide receiver three gets a lot of reps. But Jonathan Mingo is actually really good too. So... I'm just going to leave this as it is. A lot of reps. And then defensively, it's just getting a free safety. And then I think it's game time. Like, it's hey, we go 20-0 and 0 or we're going to have a lot of problems next year. Who's the best free safety in the league, huh? Go big or go home, right? This is what we got cap space for. Minka Fitzpatrick. He's got one year left with the Steelers. He's 29 years old. They were negative cap before this too, so they actually kind of need him. I couldn't. I couldn't poach him for just a first rounder, right? <laughs> Not even close. Not even close to being close. Well, let's include uh, Julian Love because they're going to need a replacement. And let's offer um, a shit ton of dog water picks. What does that do? What if I offered you a bunch of seventh and sixth rounders? Doesn't really do much, does it? Okay, we're about three and four. Those are big picks. Those are high picks. Mink is going to be hard to move. This is, not, this is not as easy as I thought it was going to be. All right, Minka's not possible. Minka's too good to get. So we're going to have to go someone worse. Here's an option I do like. Jalen Petrie. Jalen Petrie, number one, dog. He's superstar. He's 85 over us. It's certainly an upgrade. I overpaid for him. I definitely overpaid for him. Love I got in free agency, but I didn't need to give up the first round for that. That was a mistake. Can't say I'm mad about this mistake, though. So Jalen Petrie's in my entire defense has no normal devs. No normal devs on defense. Also the same on offense. We actually have too many superstar X factors on offense. You ever seen that problem before if it means we go 20 and 0 i will trade your ass i still have a bunch of like sixth and seventh round picks to trade but to be honest with you boys i don't i don't see what i could do i really don't this team is loaded to the brim if we don't go 20 and 0 with this team then we're not going 20 and 0 let's put it how it is let's go gentlemen it's time we ride i'm gonna simulate the entire draft because like literally what does it matter how did the draft go got a 73 overall wide receiver in the sixth round it's actually kind of impressive. <laughs> He's fucking in depth. Don't tell me you're like a superstar or some shit, dude. But I'd laugh my ass off. Dude, shut the fuck up. Hey, you're about to win a bowl, buddy. You're about to go 20 0. Superstar on the bench doing nothing. Manny Elam, bro, what? Okay, that's insane. Take a look at the whole draft class. The very first pick was a whiff by the Cardinals. Tough. Kyle Cruz. Q Conrad, an 82 quarterback, followed up by an 82 D tackle. Very strong draft. 283s right here. Witting, 
Taylor Paul, 80 overall, Darius Leather. Highest overall in the class was the 83s, then two 82s, an 81, uh, an 80. A second round, 80 overall, strong safety. A third round, 79 overall, corner. Brown's got a snag right there. Third round, 78 overall corner again. A seventh round, 77 overall wide receiver. A lot of steals at the 77 overall spot. Terrell Williams, Donna Lasley, George Mason, Dexter Riddick, Brendan Biggers. All right, gentlemen, this Panthers roster is ready to go 20-0. We fully sold out. We have no draft picks left. We could never possibly afford to re-sign most of these players, pay them again. So it's go big or go home. The good news is throughout the year, our young guys will still develop and our old guys won't regress. So like Iki Aquanu, Atkinson, Slater, Bryce Young, Ayuk, Miles Sanders, Tommy Tremble, and then defensively, Brian Burns, Petrie, Harrison, uh, JC Horn, George Mullins. All these guys should actually get better come playoffs. We, I know we're making the playoffs, but literally one loss and this whole thing is botched. The whole thing's botched. Very first game is against the Atlanta Falcons. We're an 88 overall, 89 offense, 87 defense. They're an 87 overall. This is the most anxiety I've ever had clicking a sim button. I'm going to click advanced week sim to midseason, bro. We either see 7-0 and or we just like... I mean, like, like, yes, I can continue into year two, but dude, this is the year. Well, not year two. We could continue into year five. Five, but I, I fully sold out. I did everything. Dude, if I'm like six and one and I lost some poverty game to a poverty franchise, I'm gonna... come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Four. Come on, Panthers. Come on, Panthers. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a third of the way there. We're a little less than a third of the way there. We're six and oh. We're six and oh at the mid mark. Oh, and our next game is the Browns. They suck. This is huge. Somebody got a new ability. Cameron Harrison got a new ability. Cameron Harrison up to an 86 overall. Great work, stud. Halfway through the season, is there anything different on the lineup? I can't imagine. No, everything looks about the same. Defensively, yeah, look the same. Brandon Ayuk gets an upgrade up to a 97 overall, boosted to a 99, of course, with Emeril. Awareness carrying short route spin move, checking in with Ayuk after all these seasons. 93 speed, 5 excel. Great catching, catching traffic, short, medium, deep. Sim to playoffs. I'm doing a, I don't even want to look. I literally, I actually don't want to look. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna look the other way for a little bit. And then when I bring, when I get the courage, I'm gonna look back. Please, 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 please. Ah! We are so close. Oh, we are so close. Holy shit. This is the greatest hurdle to jump, I think. I think going 17 and 0 is probably harder than just winning the wild card. Well, we get a bye. I feel like this is, it's the first hurdle. The second hurdle is divisional, NFC, and Super Bowl, which will obviously be the other best teams. Holy shit, monster year. I mean, that, that's what happens when you sell out your entire squad, I suppose. Bryce Young is almost so maxed out that I can't even give him upgrades. It'll only let me do a scrambler upgrade? That was super weird. Ball carry vision, plus four break sack, and plus one throw on the run. Bryce Young is God. This is why you go 17 and 0. 90 throw power, 99 deep, 99 medium, 99 short, 99 awareness. Oh my shit. D. He actually has gotten plus two speed upgrades over his years, too. He's now 89 speed, 89 XL. George Mullins. That'd be a 94 overall. This guy, man. What just an unbelievable pickup in the draft. It's a generational talent. I think for my first time ever, I think I just got MVP. I have never done a sim where I got MVP. Look at Bryce Young's stats. This is off the charts insane. 4,800 passing yards, 404 for 519, 49 touchdowns, four interceptions. That is a disgusting 133.5 QBR on the season. Miles Sanders, I tried to trade you. I'm sorry. No more 24 touchdown seasons for you, though. 300 attempts, 1,200 yards, 11 touchdowns. Ayuk, 1,311. Keenan Allen, 1,110. Mingo, 1,014. That is three receivers who all would have dominated your fantasy football lineup, and they're all on the same damn team. Travis Kelsey averaged exactly 10 yards per catch, seven receiving touchdowns, and Miles Sanders still put in five on the ground. We, we shit on everybody. Miles Garrett, what a pickup! Miles Garrett had 18 and a half sacks on 21 TFLs. Brian Burns had 16 on 10 TFLs. Cam Harrison, 10 TFLs on seven sacks. Derek Brown with 12. As a team, we've what we sacked, we got 55, 56 sacks on the season. Also, seven and a half out of grades. That's probably 60. It's disgusting. Look at this shit. Look how many times we sacked quarterbacks. Three or four sacks a game. Ugh. This defense is so good. Yearly awards. This is the first time I've ever personally seen it. Bryce Young wins league MVP. 
All right, boys, a spectacular season. We have to close this out, though. So the wild cards are by. That doesn't really matter. Or it doesn't matter at all, really. The divisional is against the Minnesota Vikings. We have the overall advantage on them. A better defense and a better offense. We're also 17 other 9 and 8. Maybe the NFC North was really strong because that's a weird record there to make it to the divisional. I'll take a look at the playoff bracket. So the Vikings were the seventh seed and they beat the two seed Giants. That's actually like good news for me. So I'm playing a seven seed here. And then it's three seed Bears versus the five seed Eagles. How the fuck are the Bears? So the NFC North is really strong. Damn. And on the other side of the bracket, it's Bills versus Chargers, Bengals versus Jaguars. No Kansas City Chiefs, no Dallas Cowboys. That's so weird. Dude, those are honestly the two teams I was most worried about. So this is like, this is a Cinderella. This is like the best case scenario for us right now. We also get some upgrade players. Like, how did Brandon Ayuk just get an upgrade on a bye week? Probably, oh, you know what it is? Probably from the awards. Whatever the awards are. He might have got Offensive Player of the Year now that I think about it. But I don't know. He's up to a 98 overall now. Divisional playoff, baby. Let's go. 90 overall Carolina Panthers with Bryce Young, Miles Garrett, and Ayuk. Taking on the Minnesota Vikings with Justin Jefferson, Daniil Hunter, and Derek Stingley. Starting this game out, it is 7-0. to zero. I think Miles Sanders put that in. 14-3. to three. I don't think the Vikings really stand a chance. Oh, 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 never mind. Oh my God, the Vikings do stand a chance. 14 to 7, 21 to 17. I think we're marching 28 to 17. 23, 28. We could close out the divisional with a solid drive here. This wasn't too much of a nail biter. There goes Miles Sanders. Hey, powerful run. Time up from the Vikings. A couple more first downs is over. I think we're just going to keep going, Miles Sanders. There's a little motion. Tommy Tremble in the backfield. Big blocks, big blocks. Good pulling guard. They call another timeout. They still have the two-minute warning to lean on. Bryce Young's going to drop back, throw a dot. This game is over. Who is that to? That was to Mingo. Jonathan Mingo makes that catch and pretty much just iced up the divisional here. He got single coverage. They still have the two-minute warning. This is not fully over. Two-minute warning and a timeout. Going to go to Miles. Dude, we're running the ball so well. That's the two-minute warning. Second and one. I think Miles Sanders just pushes this over, and it's GG's. They're going to need to send a big blitz. No, sir. You're not stopping. Oh, we go with a counter run right there. It was a questionable play call. Please run it. Please run inside zone. Please do not try and pass this. Oh, no. Throw a laser, Bryce. Dude, Bryce Young's going to get sacked. That might be out of field goal range. That was horrible play calling. Bro, you just run the ball, stay in field goal range? Now, luckily, I did sign Harrison Butker in our second year free agency. I imagine Harrison Butker can make this kick, but wow, that was just, just a bad play call. Try now Harrison Butker for a 52-yarder in the divisional. He's got to hit this, man. We burn as much clock as we can. Butker's got a cannon on him, and he absolutely drills that field goal. That makes me feel a lot better. So now it's an eight-point lead. And the Vikings have no timeouts. So worst case scenario here is a kick return, but we are all over it. They get out to the 23, and out comes Hills. The Vikings quarterback, Hills. It is not Kirk Bands. Not anymore, anyway. They got a pass the whole time. I'm hoping they just make short completions just like that. Yeah, that's perfect. You can do that all the way down the field if you want because you're going to run out of clock here. 23-31, another one. That was actually a pretty nice completion. They're going to pick up some solid yards there. 30 sec, Dude, they're actually marching. Wait a minute. Check down. Ooh, get home. Is that Miles Garrett? I don't know who that was, but we got home right there. He's going to throw a check down. Hawkinson does not get out of bounds. That's ball game. That's ball game. Hey, let's go. The divisional is a W. We beat the Falcons. I wouldn't say easily, but Bryce Young, 20 for 28, three touchdowns, no interceptions, one from them. Miles Sanders, a monster game on the ground with a touchdown and four broken tackles. It was all Keenan Allen through the air. After that was Jordan Addison. Um, and then Brandon Ayuk was five for 72 with two touchdowns. And uh, yeah. Defensively, there were so many players with sacks. DJ Johnson. How are you getting a sack? DJ Johnson, when are you coming in? Grady Jarrett got a sack. Derek Brown got a sack. Miles Garrett got a sack. I don't know what set DJ Johnson is coming in in, but uh, hey, good for him. He got a sack, right? That is a dub against the Vikings that takes us to the NFC Championship where we're taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. We do have some upgrade players here. One goes to Jalen Petrie. Love Jalen Petrie. Awareness, pursuit, and tackling. Jalen Petrie, nice upgrade. Not too concerned about the rest of those upgrades. Ahead of this Eagles game, I want to take a look at their roster. Philadelphia Eagles have a 99 A.J. Brown, DeAndre Swift, Jalen Hurts, and Devonta Smith. Then there's a bit of a drop-off to Hassan Reddick, Dallas Goddard, Jordan Mailata, 
Josh Sweat, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Jake Elliott, Bradbury, Reed Blankenship. Their best generated players, wide receiver Glenn Fisher. We're so close to 20 0. We got to get past the Philadelphia Eagles. This game starts out with a Panthers and an Eagles touchdown. Still 7 7. Panthers are back on the board. Eagles are back on the board. Panthers are back on the board. Eagles are, oh, Eagles only a field goal there. 24-21, wait a minute. Two minutes, 20 seconds left. We're in the red zone, down three. Let's go, Panthers. Let's go, Panthers. Check down, check down, check down. You see him. Who throws deep over the middle. He's 26 for 32 to Keenan Allen. Reed Blankenship breaks it up. We got a little double stack formation. Miles Sanders behind Bryce Young. He's blocking. We heave it to the boundary. That's Keenan Allen, but only four yards. Just making this a more manageable third down here. That's the two-minute warning. It's 24 to 21 in the NFC Championship. Dude, this is too close. I don't like this. Bryce Young drops back. Laser! Huge touchdown. I think that went to Jonathan Mingo too. Dude, Jonathan Mingo having a historic run in the playoffs right now. He keeps getting open. Look, that's a scary ball, dude. Bradbury could have picked that off. Now, the good news, Harrison Butker makes this. It's a four-point lead. The bad news is Philadelphia has all three timeouts and a minute 57. So one strong drive, and they just win this NFC championship. We got to keep them out of the end zone. Field goal does them no good, though. So it's touchdown or bust. Look at the return man, 52. I don't know who 52 is, but he's playing his heart out on kick return. He made the tackle in the divisional, too. 99 overall, Jalen Hurts in the backfield. It's first and 10. Oh, and guess who gets through? It's a fumble. Wait, so if that's a fumble, then the ball's live right now. How did he just catch the fumble and never get tackled? Miles Garrett flies through, though. The Miles Garrett acquisition has been insane. He's been so good. Uh, looks like it's maybe a screen play, a very good play from the Eagles right there. Stepping up big time is Jalen Petrie. Third and 11, Eagles use a timeout. This is a great defensive drive so far. There's an exclamation. Oh, good pass rush. Jalen Hurts and Dallas Goddard do not connect. He was rolling out, but they don't connect. Fourth and 11, they got to go for this. This is the game. This is the NFC Championship right here. Come on, pass rush. I got all these monsters for a reason. A double team on Miles Garrett. Unloads and it's not home. It's not home. No two minute warning to save them. That's a turnover. Bryce Young's trot. Now we're not quite in victory formation because two timeouts. Yeah, we're not quite in victory formation here. Just gonna hand it off to Miles Sanders. Oh, it's a read option. That is a psychopath play to call. Bryce, you're gonna fumble. Holy shit. Coach is a dog. Third and three. We'll milk most of our clock here. What the fuck? You threw the ball? You're a psycho. Dude, my coach is a psycho. Brandon Ayuk has 13 receptions for 184 yards. And now we're in victory formation. 28 to 24. Vegas had the line at 51 and a half. We just barely eclipsed it. Huge win. Two minutes left. We're down 24-21. Mingo puts a touchdown in and defense holds. Nick Sirianni can't believe it. He thought this was his year. Bryce Young had 342 passing yards, 29 for 35. Jalen Hurts really didn't, 13 for 24. He must have had some massive throws. Only 13 completions with 286 yards. Miles Sanders wasn't as effective on the ground, but neither was DeAndre Swift. It was the Brandon Ayuk show. 13 for 184. Mingo, like he's really not even getting that many looks. He just keeps getting in the end zone. AJ Brown is four for 112. Devin Duvernay was two for 106. Jeez. And uh, defensively, Miles Garrett continues to have been an excellent acquisition. Two sacks in the biggest game of our lives. There is one game between us and a 20 and 0 record. There is one game between us and a 20 and 0 record. We do have some players to upgrade. Holy shit. And it's all of our like best players. Bryce Young is going to get another scrambler upgrade. Or will it let me do strong arm? Yeah, it won't let me do strong arm. I've never seen this before. Not enough skill points to purchase this bucket. Scrambler, I guess, is allowed. Two breaks at carrying, injury, and throw on the run. Bryce Young's insane. Brian Burns with another upgrade here. It's all speed rusher for him. Brian Burns, agility, awareness, power moves, pursuit, strength, and zone coverage. Get a little upgrade for Miles Sanders as well. Going to hand him elusive back. Take him up to a 94 overall. He gets a speed upgrade. That's awesome. So Miles Sanders goes to 92 speed. Kim Harrison's going to walk into the Super Bowl an 89 overall. Technically a 90 overall. Cam Harrison. 89 speed, 92 excel. Such a fast linebacker with power moves. So good. Our Super Bowl is against the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati Bengals came into the playoffs the three seed. They beat the Bills. That's Panthers versus Bengals. 
in the Super Bowl. The Bengals roster, Joe Burrow, 99, Higgins, 99, Jamar Chase, 99. Then there's a drop off to Chidobi Awuji, Trey Hendrickson, Evan McPherson, Taylor Britt, Joe Mixon. You know, on paper, the Eagles were better. On paper, the Eagles were definitely better. So we'll see if this is as big of a fight. 92 offense and 87 defense to our 92 offense, 89 defense. We got the overall advantage on them. Here we go, boys. The last game between us and a 20-0 season. We are 19 wins, zero losses. We just got to take the dub right here, boys. What a weird Super Bowl. We ever going to see this in real life? Panthers, Bengals? It's not out of the question, man. Maybe four years from now in real life. Just like it is here in this uh, in this simulation, actually. Kicking this Super Bowl off. It is 7-0 early for the Panthers. Bengals respond with a field goal and a touchdown. And another touchdown. Panthers stay in it with a touchdown. It's 21. Let's go. Ooh, that got a little scary. And we've got the ball. 21-17 in the fourth quarter. Let's watch the boys close this out. Stay strong. Miles Sanders with a run. Excellent blocking. He's going to stiff arm a man. Let's go, Miles Sanders. I'm sorry, I ever threatened to trade you miles i apologize it was an accident it wasn't my idea it was someone else's first and 10 i think we're gonna see a lot more run plays here let's see just how good this offensive line is run right up the gut miles sanders turn nothing into something i'll take that second and six it's gonna take us all the way to the two minute warning the Bengals are floundering right now Bengals have three timeouts just like last game if we can pick up a few first downs we can put the super bowl away miles sanders with a hurdle <laughs> Miles Sanders forces an early Bengals timeout. Oh my God, are we actually going to run the ball down their throats till it's game over? I'd be so shocked. Weak side, run, diabolical. Another Bengals timeout. Dude, the, are the Panthers really going to do them like this? No. Oh, okay. Good play. Good play right there. I think that was maybe DJ Reader. Second and eight. I'm not sure who made the play, but for the first time, they stuffed the run. We go to the edge. Miles Sanders. Oh, huge play from Chidobi Awujie. That was massive. He took on the block from Tommy Trimble and made the tackle. The clock is ticking, but we can't end it right now. Third and four. Are we passing? Dude, what is coach is a psycho? Coach wants it all. And the pass is broken up. Jonathan Mingo can't hang on to it, coach. You run that ball, you run it down to 20 seconds, and you kick the field goal. Greedy! Hey, listen, it worked in the NFC Championship, though. Harrison Butker. I was never worried that he was going to miss that. Harrison Butker has been lights out. Damn, somebody got flattened, though. Harrison Butker drills it. This game is no longer safe, though. 24 to 17 with 59 seconds left. We have to hold the Bengals. First play out, Joe Burrow rifles to an open man, but they are in bounds. That's huge for us. Is he spiking this? He's not. That looked like a spike formation. Brian Burns. <laughs> Brian Burns scared the shit out of him. Good work. George Mullins, the dog, was in coverage. It's second and 10, 35 seconds left. No timeouts. Bengals. Need a touchdown, but they are approaching the 50-yard line. Like, Joe Burrow's in hell right now, and that's in bounds. Oh, what a genius drop by the running back. I thought that he caught that, but it was considered a pass breakup. So now it's third and 10. Third and 10, Joe Burrow rifles one in. That one is caught. That clock is ticking, man. You got to spike that ball. This is a crazy... Dude, to call a play here is so weird to me. He's going to... I thought he was going to get sacked. He almost walked himself into a sack. George Mullins in coverage. Don't throw his way. The final play of the Super Bowl to go 20-0. Joe Burrow, second and 10, six seconds. Bengals need a miracle. No pass rush. He heaves deep. Drop! Oh, there's I lost track of the ball. I lost track of the ball. I had no idea if we stopped that. But we do. Confetti rains in Hard Rock Stadium in the shades of Carolina blue. George Mullins, Miles Garrett, Bryce Young, Brandon Ayuk are Super Bowl champions. Oh my God. Jalen Petrie's up there. Don't forget about him. Don't forget about Brandon Scherf and that offensive line. Letting Miles Sanders go to work. J.C. Horn. You know, there's not too many Panthers players that even got this ring. What, Bryce Young, Miles Sanders, J.C. Horn got it. Mingo got it. What a game. Harrison Butker, huge field goal. And then it was all defense after that. Miles Sanders cooked on that, on that last drive for us, though. Massive drive. 
The Super Bowl 24 to 17 goes to the Carolina Panthers. Bryce Young, three touchdowns and an interception. Joe Burrow, 253 yards, two touchdowns. Miles Sanders, 15 attempts, 81 yards. Great job, 5.4 yards per carry in the Super Bowl. Bryce Young even got a little shifty, and so did Joe Burrow. Same stat line. Keenan Allen, dude. What a good acquisition Keenan Allen was. Didn't really expect him to be a huge impact, but he in all these playoff games was our biggest receiver. Six receptions, 75 yards, and two touchdowns. Ayuk had one, five for 44. Kelsey, five for 60. Mingo, five for 88. Unbelievable. We dominated the stat sheet. And defensively... It was Brian Burns in the Super Bowl who made the biggest impact. 1.5 sacks. Uh, Von Bell had half a sack. Miles Garrett never got home and only three tackles, no TFLs. But hey, he got us there because Miles Garrett was huge in the NFC Championship. The 20 and 0 season is complete. We went 17 and 0 in the regular season. We won the divisional. We won the NFC Championship. And of course, you just saw it there. We won the Super Bowl. It got real close in those playoffs, but we hung on. The 2026 season recap. Super Bowl MVP, Bryce Young. NFL regular season MVP, Bryce Young. Coach of the year was Frank Reich. And offensive player of the year, wow, it was Debo Samuel. Now there's only one thing left to do. Let's sim into the future and see if this dynasty holds up. I have a feeling this dynasty does not hold up because we're broke. We have no draft picks for the next three years and there's no way we can pay any of these guys and half of them are about to retire. But there is like, you got to remember, Brandon Ayuk is young and insanely good. Bryce Young is insanely good. I feel like 99 Bryce Young can kind of carry a lot of like mediocre players. So George Mullins is young, X Factor. So I'm going to let this sim for 30 minutes and uh, I'll come back and see what's good. The year is 2030. We're still 10 and 7. So we actually still have a pretty good roster here. Let me see what the lineup looks like. How many players did we lose? We still got Bryce Young. We still got Ayuk. We still got Travis. Dude, Travis Kelsey's a 74 overall, but he's still playing. We got J. Lucas. Looks like we drafted a superstar right tackle. Aquano's a 97, Rashawn's a 95, Mingo's a 93. And on defense, Brian Burns is an X Factor. Miles Garrett's still sticking around and a super high overall at that. George Mullins is a hard 99, JC Horn's a 97, and Petrie's a 91. We actually left this team in quite good hands. It's not as decimated as you might think it would be. We are 10 and 7 right now. What's the league history? So last Super Bowl was Chiefs Seahawks. The year before that was Seattle Seahawks, Bengals Wild. The Bengals went back to back years and lost both of them. 2027 was Seahawks Ravens. Wow. So we never went back. We never went back. Justin Fields won MVP this year. Yeah, we really were a one-hit wonder, I guess. Bryce Young is leading the league in passing yards, though. I mean, we're in the wild card playoff right now. We technically could win the Super Bowl in this year. I'm just going to full sim these. We have a breakout D lineman for Jonathan Odom. Okay. We win the wild card. Do we win the divisional? We're playing the 14-3 and three Seattle Seahawks. We lost the division. Damn. So we did all of that, but the dynasty to come out of this was the Seattle Seahawks. They built a fucking... Oh my God. Whoa. So they go to the Super Bowl the year after we win it and they lose and then they win it again and then they win it again and then they win it again. Dak Prescott is on the Seattle Seahawks. Dude, what? I'm trying to be like them, bro. That should be my next challenge. Win the Super Bowl three years in a row. How did they do that? They have 99 Kenneth Walker, 99 Charles Cross, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Ross McNeil, right end, Superstar X Factor, Edward Oliver, 99 deep tackle. Tariq Woolen, 98. DK Metcalf, 97. Oh my God, this team's insane. Look at their draft picks. They're insane. All right, boys. Okay, that is it. We went 20 and 0. You know, the Panthers are still doing all right three years later. So I'm proud of us. Hey, I love you guys. Thanks for watching as always. And of course, I will see you in the next rebuild. Peace out.